That 70s show star and longtime member of the Church of Scientology, Danny Masterson, you probably heard his name, sentenced last week to 30 years to life in prison for drugging and raping two women 20 years ago. The judge was not hearing any of the mitigation arguments, any of the arguments to the, she could have, the judge could have sentenced 15 to life, did 30 because of aggravating circumstances. But now it also comes to what was going on behind the scenes. OK, co-stars Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis spent all weekend fighting massive backlash. Why? They sent letters of support for Danny Masterson to the judge about his character. They became public. They're now apologizing. Interesting, right? The victims, all of whom were Scientologists or former, say the church tried to silence them with harassment and threats. The church denies these accusations. We have two guests with insight not only uh, into the church, but to Masterson himself, the host of the Growing Up in Scientology YouTube channel, uh, Aaron Smith Levin. He knows the three victims well, speaks to them daily. And Danny Masterson's former stepfather, who himself was a fixer for Scientology, Joe Reich. Uh, it's good to have both of you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start, Aaron, with uh, the victims here. And how do they feel about the sentence? Uh, how do they feel about the disposition towards the church in this matter? Well, I feel a little bad that after everything the victims have gone through and after this victory, they still have to have people speaking for them. Um, I, I know that Jane Doe 2 and 3 would uh, love to, to, to speak for themselves if, if given the opportunity. But I will say, I can say they are thrilled with the outcome. They believe justice was served. They believe they've been heard. They've been believed. A jury has unanimously convicted serial rapist and Scientologist in good standing, Danny Masterson. And, you know, all three of these women were in Scientology when Danny raped them. They are all out of Scientology and uh, for very good reasons. Uh, Aaron, just quickly, uh, let the audience know why the accusers are uh, the victims aren't uh, speaking out right now. Oh, I think if you um, invited Jane Doe 2 and Jane Doe 3 to speak out, they probably would. Um, Jane Doe 1 has to continue to stay somewhat anonymous for the time being. Um, but I'd be I'd be happy to provide information to you, your team, on, on how to reach. Jane Doe 2 is Nisha Trout. It's okay that they're, they, they're public now. You can find Nisha Trout on Twitter. Jane Doe 3 is Chrissy Carnell Bixler, and she can be easily found on, uh, on Instagram. I'm, I'm sure they would love to speak. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we're not avoiding having them tell their story. It was it's obviously uh, an accommodation so that they can have their pri privacy and their safety kept intact, because there are re real real reasons and issues here about concerns of retaliation. So let's uh, now talk about that and uh, figure out, uh, Joe, what that means. The idea that the church was involved, the church helped with the cover up, the church helped silence uh, the accuser, uh, the accusers, the victims by saying in Scientology, you can't go bad on one of your own. What do you make of those suggestions? Well, it's absolutely 100% true. <clears throat> the reason I know that is I was their fixer. What does that really specifically mean? Well, there's a problem that a parishioner had with the church. For example, <clears throat> they wanted their money back, 100 grand, 150,000, 200 grand. The church would circle jerk them around. They wouldn't give their money. So what the church would try and do would find dirt on that guy to make him withdraw his claim for his money to be returned back to him. In that case, this is what they would do. So when something was wrong, they would tell that individual, look, you can't move forward and you can't say anything because if you do, we're going to, let's use for a better word, pressure you or blackmail you into submission to withdraw and not say a word so that the church was protected, not necessarily the individual. They couldn't give two, uh, two peas about him. So long as their uh, optics were not a threat, then they would just back off and make the issue about the individual and not about the truth. And the, suge the description that Aaron gives of <clears throat> what Danny Masterson is now in the eye of these uh, convictions as a serial rapist uh, who was uh, intentionally abusive and aggressive and violent. Does that square with the Danny Masterson you knew? Not at all. Originally, you have to make, you have to look at this as two parts, Chris. I raised Danny for 10 to 12 years. 
good kid, didn't like school too much, talented athlete, great father, great grandfather, good family upbringing, right? In his career, once his career took off in 1998, everything changed. I was divorced in 95. He moved on. He got on with his life, and things changed after that. So to me, when I read all about this, it's quite shocking. But at the end of the day, I, I'll follow the law of the land. And those rights of those women were violated, then the, then the punishment fits the crime. And you just have to live with that. Take your medicine, as we say in Australia, and then just move on and not complain or, or, or back out of it. Now, Aaron, I want to get your take. Uh, I want to play for people what's happening uh, with Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. Obviously, those are names people will know. Um, our understanding is that they put in letters of character support uh, for Masterson. I guess they didn't know they were going to become public, but when they did, uh, they apologized uh, a lot. I think we have some sound on it, right, Dusty? The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's ever been a victim of sexual assault, sexual abuse, or rape. All right. This is a it's a very a broad apology. They're obviously worried about backlash because they've been getting their asses kicked on social media, which is understandable <laughs> because, Aaron, at the end of the day, you may not want to hurt the victims or anything like that. But if you're saying anything to the judge that is supportive and looking for a more lenient sentence uh, for the defendant, that is supporting the defendant, is it not? Well, sure. And to be honest, it's, it's even a bit worse than that, because, you know, I think when Ashton says it was meant for the judge to read, what that really means is we didn't think anybody would see these letters. And if you actually right. read the letters, it doesn't just say, oh, you know, think of his poor daughter, you know, his daughter, or, you know, shouldn't grow up without a father for more than 15 years. The letters went so far as to say Danny Masterson is essentially the kindest, gentlest, most gracious person I've ever known. I've never known him to be anything other than a wonderful person. And it's just not not true. Ashton's hands are pretty filthy dirty uh, in his complicity with some of the behavior that Danny Masterson's exhibited over the last 30 years. Uh, Danny Masterson was one of his closest friends. Ashton Kutcher knows very well the kind of guy um, that Danny Masterson was. Um, I mean, if you read the letters, it's shocking. Then how do you explain, explain Mila Kunis doing it as well? I think Mila Kunis is someone who herself was abused from a young age. She was 14 years old when she started acting on that show. Danny was 22 or 23. Ashton Kutcher was 19. Some of the things that have come out on social media in the last couple of days is some extremely inappropriate sexual behavior between uh, the group, um, mostly involving Mila. So it's hard for me to... Um, condemn or blame Mila too much, honestly, but uh, uh, it's very easy to, to, to blame Ashton. Um, no, I understand this, you know, where your opinion is coming from. Obviously, Mila Kunis married Ashton Kutcher, so uh, you know, obviously she, she saw that as a positive relationship in her life. Well, the next chapter of this is going to be how the church gets implicated. And do you think that could have some role with Kutcher and Kunis? Their names have been uh, mentioned in connection to the church as well, Joe. Well, I think, you know, if you going back to Aaron's point about the letters, I think why the letters blew up in, in everyone's face was that the fact that no one was going to read them. Well, that was not true because it's a legal document. And in the case of my children, to tell the judge that I walked out on the family, and I was this sort of, uh, you know, abandoned type father it was a bit of an insult and, and, and quite frankly, shocking to me. So I just have to stand up for my right. And, and so now what's happened now is you've got a perjury situation occurring. I'm sure that the judge would be not too happy realizing, oh, my God, I've got two of the brothers and sisters of the accused that's been convicted telling me a story that's not really true. Just tell the truth. No one cares about the, the, the BS. Just tell the truth the way it is and not lie about it. And now that you, you've introduced lies or cover-ups, that's just unacceptable, Chris, period, especially with a parent, yeah? If I thought I was the, a bad person, fine, but I'm not. We move on, yeah? I understand your point. Uh, Aaron, last question to you. Uh, you believe this isn't over. 
where the church is involved because there is legal process, you believe, uh, involving allegations against the church and its role here and maybe elsewhere. How so? That's right. Well, two things I'd like to say to to wrap this up. You know, one of the things that's been thoroughly documented in this in this case is that as a Scientologist, drugging and violently raping other members is not enough to get you expelled. But telling the authorities that you were raped by a Scientologist is enough exactly. to get you expelled. There's currently five ongoing legal actions against Scientology, and I think the result in this case could potentially affect two of them. There is a grand jury investigation underway into obstruction of justice on behalf of Scientology and David Miscavige in the Danny Masterson affair. Um, I don't know much. After all, I, I grew up in a cult. But I do think that this guilty verdict could potentially give more weight to that investigation into obstruction of justice. The Jane Doe's also have a lawsuit against David Miscavige, Scientology, and Danny Masterson for the nonstop stalking, harassment, and intimidation they've been subjected to since coming forward. Again, I could be wrong on this because I'm not a lawyer. I just feel that the guilty verdict tends to give more weight to their claims of harassment and um, and, and gives that lawsuit a, a better chance of success. There's three other legal actions. There's a, a, a child labor trafficking case against David Miscavige and Scientology in Australia. There's a child sex trafficking lawsuit against Scientology and David Miscavige in Los Angeles. And of course, there's Leah Remini's lawsuit against Scientology and David Miscavige for the nonstop yeah, stalking I, uh... harassment. I'm trying to get Leah Remini. I know that she's been very uh, active uh, in defense of herself and what she wants to be understood uh, about the church, her and her sister. And when she wants the platform, she'll have it. Uh, Aaron, uh, I appreciate it. Aaron Smith Levin, thank you very much. Joe Reish, uh, the story continues and we will stay on it. Thank you both Thanks, very Chris. much. Gentlemen. Thank you very appreciate much. It. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Okay. Be well. Appreciate you doing this.